the green light is flashing. Yeah, I got yeah. live on my side, so I can hear you. You can hear me. Excellent. Okay. It's already going better than last time. I know this is going much better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Finally, starting to figure it out. It's only taken a year for that to happen. Okay, so I'm going to um, send out a tweet. I think you have already. Yep, I'm getting pips and everything on my side. So, and I have. I'm also trying to send out a Facebook, but my Facebook won't let me upload images anymore for some reason. Hmm. Ah, I'm not sure why that is. So I'm just going to have to skip that. Refresh that page. Yeah, I don't know if it's Facebook or is it just my computer or something's been temperamental. Anyway, let's get this uh, show on the road. How have you been today, buddy? You all good? Yeah, good. Um, apart from cleaning <laughs> to make it look a bit more presentable. <laughs> there was dust everywhere this, this afternoon. So, um, yeah, it's been... Quite a good day. I've been getting me uh, my lightsaber and stuff finished. So yeah, it's awesome. been a quite productive day, really. I am looking forward to talking to you about that. Yeah. Uh, right. I'm just going to change this over so I can hear you on my earphones. Cool. There we go. I can hear you on my earphones now. And we have some viewers rolling in. So well, uh, let's get this show on the road. I suppose. Next. Um, wow. On time. Everything went smoothly. Amazing. I just did a. a I just I know it's touch fun, yeah. Um, I just did a live stream with my um, Patreon um, supporters, uh, which is kind of cool. So um, I spent the last hour talking to Kimberly and Zachary, um, okay. but uh, I came down and I like turned on the laptop and I got the camera on going. And there was like all this feedback and static and everything. I was like, "What's going on?" I set this up last a couple of weeks ago. It was all working, and I was like swearing, and, like pressing buttons, and I didn't realize that Zachary's listening in. And I'm just like, ah, going, going crazy. And and then I realized that I last month I used my laptop, which I'm working on now, and I had it all set up perfectly. And I was using like my shop computer, which is just like a pile of junk. So I hadn't got anything set up. So uh, I had some technical problems. But anyway, uh, I digress. Let's get this show on the road. Hello yeah. and welcome to everybody who is watching either live or on YouTube. My name is Tom, and I run Sorenzo Props, and this is Sorenzo Meets, where I talk to people from all around the world who are interested in the same things that I'm interested in. And that is props and cosplay. Um, this week, this week, it's yes, this week. I am honoured to be joined yet again by John from J Cosplay Props. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. I'm spoiling so, your rhythm. Sorry, you you're at it. I, I, that was a good flow, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. I literally just had my dinner, so I'm full of energy. Full oh, of. Good. Full of Full of beans. I didn't actually have beans, but uh, <laughs> I took a phrase. So, sir, how are you doing today? Um, uh, I know we kind of covered that. You're good. <laughs> well, for the people who weren't here, um, I'm doing great. Uh, spent most of the day cleaning the workshop because I wanted to look a bit more presentable, not a dirty mess. But it looks fantastic. Thank um, you very much. I kind of yeah. hate you a little bit because that is just too shiny and nice, and I really wish my shop looked like that. Oh okay. God. It took a lot <laughs> to get it this far, Jesus. Yeah, um, I'm, yeah. Keen, I'm keen to talk to you about that shop, but your sign yeah. on the back is exactly what I want. I've had like several different ideas of making signs yeah. in a different way because I kind of want to make a thing of it, but your sign is beautiful and that blue light. Yeah. That was a really um, like last minute thing. Um, I, I had a lot of, um, well, not a lot, but I had some MDF, like long strips of MDF left from making these countertops. And I thought, that wall looks long. That could use a sign. <laughs> and I had some, obviously, some more Christmas lights because Christmas had just finished. So I thought I could use that as like the backing because it this literally just glued on Christmas lights behind there. Yeah. It's that's all it is. Um, and I thought, right, I can do that. So I just made the sign in about a day. And then stuck it on the wall, and <laughs> it looks great. It, it came out fantastic. so much better than I thought it would. I watched your progress on that, and I oh, was just like, "That's incredibly, yeah, incredibly good." Um, but yeah, I want to come back to your workshop. Um, yeah, sure. I want to talk a lot about your workshop uh, over the next hour because I, I love it. It's fantastic. Um, <laughs> but let's just uh, do some housekeeping. Um, and what's been is let's see what's been happening in my world. I can't remember what's been happening in my world. Um, oh yeah, so uh, last night I recorded a quick little video um, where I did the raffle for my Patreon giveaway. 
Uh, if you're not familiar, I started a Patreon campaign at the start of this year, and it has been growing. It has doubled every month, which is phenomenal. Oh, wow, that's uh, really good. Quite, I know, yeah. Um, they're great stats. I hope it doubles again this month. Yeah, yeah. This is going. So, yeah, get, get on board. So, yeah, patreon.com forward slash Lorenzo Props. And there are a whole heap of rewards there. And part of the reward, everybody who chooses to support me to help me do this sort of thing, to help me make videos and make content and give you guys more, are entered into a raffle, a prize draw, where I give away a prop piece. And last month, as part of the One Day Build series that I have been doing this year, I made the Ice Axe from Tomb Raider yeah, 2013 version and uh, yeah I did the draw last night and a guy from Salem in the USA uh, called Zachary has won that um, awesome. so that's going to be shipped to him and uh, I've just been talking to um, some of the Patreon supporters. They also get a part of the reward is a live stream with me. So we've been talking about props, we've been talking about cosplay, we've been talking about movies, uh, we've been talking about all sorts of stuff. It was great. Um, so yeah that's what I've been doing, I've been working on some Red Hood helmets, and I kind of have decided that next month's prize might be a Red Hood helmet. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm working on some at the moment. Um, I do finish pieces uh, every now and again. I'll uh, do some orders. So I thought if I'm making a couple, I might as well just make an extra one and make somebody's day happy. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Um, and that is all I can think of that I've, I've been doing recently. Anything else happening? Oh, yeah, I spent like I've been editing videos. Oh, I've been writing my book. Yes. Oh, how's it going? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, I've got a working title and I've got like more or less the whole sort of thing drafted out. Um, yeah. So I'm actually getting into the writing stage. Today was supposed to be a writing day, I had it in my diary. Uh, last week I went to like a fancy hotel in the Glasgow city center and I spent the whole day there and I had my breakfast and I had my lunch and like people coming and giving me teas and coffees and stuff. And I'm like, yes, I'm a writer. Blah, blah, blah. I know it's quite fun. Um, so yeah, I'm working hard on that. Just trying to find a time so I can get it out for you guys. But what have you been working on, sir? I know the answer to this question, but I don't do. think they talk at home. Um, no, they don't. This probably won't come out for or at least on my main site for probably about a month or so. Cause I've got stuff staggered. Um, but I made, this uh it's luke skywalker's uh, lightsaber this is the empire strikes back version um this was made out of pvc pipe um particularly if i don't even know where i put it now but it's um it's actually a paint roller an old paint roller <laughs> i had from paint in this place left over and i don't like throwing stuff away because it could come in handy so i thought i could make this into a lightsaber turns out after i pulled all the fur and everything off it the diameter of a paint roller is the exact same diameter as, as luke skywalker's lightsaber so that was a really really handy um little find so um it was just a, like an experiment really i covered it in um aluminum foil uh, or aluminium foil whichever is your uh, poison and um i scratched it down with like a very fine sandpaper um to basically buff right a lot of the like the join lines and stuff like that um and then sealed it with lacquer and then the rest of it is all um just scrap materials i found around the workshop like these are old um windscreen wipers which are just like the ones they used in the film um i mean this little clasp thing on the bottom is a coat hanger that i bent um like the battery clip holder here and all part of a torch for the um the front bit there's a button off one of my old dremels and stuff uh so it's yeah it's all just found materials and it took about three days or so on and off just getting stuff done but um yeah it came out way better than i thought it would it's um i'm gonna use it as like the basis because i want to do a series at some point um showing that you can obviously build stuff you know like quite good quality props from stuff that you find around the house. I know there's series online where you can do that already, but a lot of them look like they have been made, um, like, you know, not, I won't say shoddily, but you know, that they, they, they look, they look quick, like they look quickly made. And I just wanted to like create something that proves that you can make a really, really good, accurate prop. I have stuff that you can find around the house. And this is basically a test for that so um i'll probably build another one of these moving forward and um, record the process and that'll be the beginning of like the series and stuff like that and there's a few other things i want to do as well but yeah it was a really good like learning experience and it obviously cool to have a lightsaber walking around on my hip now so 
uh, yeah, that's what I've been uh, up to the last couple of days, at least. That is pretty cool. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but um, when my YouTube channel first started, one of the first videos I uploaded was the One Pound Shop yeah, Lightsaber yeah. Challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm amazed because like, we just sort of, rather than trying to recreate um, a lightsaber, that's, I thought that'd be quite difficult to do. We just sort of made up our own, which was quite cool. Um, I'm just trying to find an image. Man, I have so many pictures here. Where are they all? <laughs> I should have just went and found them on there. But yeah, we just bought, like, we had 10, a buddy of mine who's a model maker as well. We spent 10 pounds at the pound shop and we had to buy just what we thought would make a good lightsaber. And then we had intended to do it over a day, but we quickly learned that a day just wasn't enough time, particularly yeah. with having the paint stuff. And um, so we did it over two days. Uh, right, here's a crappy image of them. Uh, let me see if I can share this. Where's my share button? Share. There we go. So. Oh it's... yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, I remember watching this video. It was, it was, it was, it's been in the back of my mind for a while. I think it's probably what instigated this in the first place. So. Yeah. So they're just made from like there's a bit of a microphone. There's a bit of a USB. There's like a, a light. There's a couple of light sources. Mine had like five light sources in it. Um, That's there's pretty. like a, a spirit level <laughs> from, um, <laughs> from a crap multi tool. Um, so yeah, that was a, a whole heap of fun um, and a really really good sort of uh, practicing for sort of yeah, putting yeah. yourself to the test and realizing you don't have to spend a fortune that you can spend as little as yeah, ten pounds. Right. So uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, doing what we do, you can sometimes like lose sight of that because obviously you're dealing with like quite expensive materials, and you know you're building everything from scratch. And sometimes it's good to just sit back for like two, three days and work on something that isn't necessarily like going to go out to people, but it just reminds you of the build process and the creativity of like trying to make a square fit a circle sort of thing. <laughs> but, so it's yeah, it was it's. Um, I recommend anybody like just build their own lightsaber, not just necessarily a Star Wars one, just because it's, it's a good starting prop. It's you know there's a lot of scope for it. So definitely, definitely. So on that note, um, my first question for everybody who comes on the show. This is not my first question to you now because we've just been chatting for how long. But uh, who the heck are you, and what exactly do you do? I am John Haddock, or Jay, from Jay Cosplay Props, and I build props for a living. I've um, been doing it full-time now, I think it's five years this year, Jesus Christ. Um, but yeah, uh, <laughs> God, that's, that's just flawed me, man. Like, <laughs> years, Jesus. Um, but yeah, uh, building, uh, I mainly deal with full light props because that's what a lot of people like ask me for it's what i became like known for making stuff in the first place and it sort of led me down a very long full light road that i'm only just now starting to move myself away from um not that i don't like the full light stuff but you know i can't exclusively make that stuff all the time so yeah. um, i'm this year especially with the new workshop and stuff like that i'm really gonna like branch out and stuff i'm i am gonna build some full life stuff this year um <laughs> like some quite big stuff so i can't quite escape it all but um i've got some like other stuff that i've uh, got planned as well i mean this lightsaber it was obviously one um i'm gonna be doing an x-wing um helmet project at some point around june or july i'm gonna start um, I managed to acquire a, an original um, helmet, the, the base helmet that the um, the, hel the original helmets were made from. So I'm going to build one from scratch. Well, not from scratch, but you know, modify it the same way they did and build a proper X-wing helmet from that. Um, and there's a few, yeah, like I said, there's a few other projects and stuff like that. But um, yeah, that's what I'm mostly main for. I mean, you can see the uh, NCR stuff uh, behind me and um, like the pit boys and stuff like that that I'm going to be uh, sorting out soon. Um, yeah, and some um, Formula One race helmets that somebody uh, has asked me for as well. That's going to be a new um, venture for me. Uh, I, I painted a very old um, bike helmet, like you know, years ago, you know, like a school project or something like that. But it'd be really good to like tackle it from this perspective, especially with like things like vinyl cutters and stuff of that nature. So um, yeah, I'm really, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, th this year is going to be a, like a really good year for me, especially after the last two years of, it, it's been very, very slow going because I emigrated to Ireland and um, I went from a quite nice large garage to a, a six by eight shed. And then I moved again and to a larger shed. And then I ended up having to move again 
um, to a place that had no shed. So um, I was like, right, let's build a workshop. And then that's where, obviously, this came from. Um, like tooth and nail trying to get the damn thing built. But yeah, here we are. So that's me. <laughs> Well, talk us through this workshop, because I'm keen to know know more about it. I have been paying attention to your various social media postings, but uh, that gives a, bit, a little bit of background on it. Um, I th um, did you build it yourself, the contractor? Where is it? Uh, what have you got in it? Let's hear all about it. Right. Um, it was built by um, my, well, it will be my father-in-law, um, and a couple of his people. Um, they... But basically, I like drew out the plans and stuff like that, and I said like this is like the size we want, like you know, something I can grow in. I mean, it's after working in a very small like shed for the last two years and wanting like a larger space. Like I could have gone bigger, but this is fine for me for two, three years. Um, so yeah, we we went over the plans. Uh, there was a brick wall at the end of our garden, which is this wall here, mm -hmm. um, that we then doubled up and then built the, obviously the rest of the walls and then the front foundation and stuff like that um, from that. And that the, the build process of laying the bricks and stuff only took a few weeks. The main problems then came with um, putting the roof on, which was delayed because we had high winds and floods, so the materials couldn't be put up safely. Um, then I put the roof on, um, and it needed obviously needed to be insulated. But the um, the place that sells the insulation is down by the river, which flooded again, so that delayed things. So when I then finally got the insulation up, uh, we needed things like electricity, and we flooded again. Um, <laughs> so and then the power went down. It's been an absolute freaking nightmare. It's rained like continuously here for like eight months, only just letting up now. Um, have, you, have, you, have you been to Ireland before? <laughs> well, before, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jeez, like, by, even by uh, like stand, the standards of this place, it's been pretty damn bad. But we're on the other side of it now, thank God. But yeah, it's it really, really fought us like all the way home. Um, and then obviously, I finally managed to paint the place and get all these counters and stuff. All these, um, all the elevation elevators, the counters are made from the shells from my old workshop. I just cut them and then um, raised. I basically put the tops on top top of them, and they're all standing level work surfaces. Yep. So um, there's quite a lot of storage space underneath because I've got um, a chronic neck problem. So if I hunch over too much, I basically get a headache for like three, four days flat, um, and a really bad like wrench in my neck. So being able to like even sit down at this level is like really, really comfortable. And like work, basically, I'm when I work, I'm at the same level. So mm -hmm. it's like really, really cool. Um, oh, what else? What is in here? Right, signs, presentation, <laughs> helmets. Um, I've got my. Hang on, should we? Can we move things? Oh, let's go on a tour. If we can, I don't know how. Yeah, we've got my lovely drill press here on the uh, the end of the counter with me, and I've got my my drills and my lights and stuff like uh, here, and like calendar work surfaces and stuff like that. On the other side here, if you can see it, I, there is is my paint station. So I've got everything I need there. I've got all my tape rollers, like obviously, you know, uh, paper towels, spray paints, um, my spray booth, uh, mini spray booth is going to go in there. Um, I've got room down here for the compressors and stuff because I'm still fitting tools in this place. I still haven't finished fitting out completely. <laughs> so, um, but. Yeah, I've got my storage racks under here for um, like helmets that I'm working on for like personal projects. I've got my storage under this side uh, for work projects because um, this place has to act as a studio as well. Um, so obviously for like videos and stuff like that, as well as workspace. And if I'm working on like customer projects, I try and keep their stuff like either videos until it's finished or unless they say I can, because obviously they yep. pay, so I don't want to get it out there. And plus I'm a bit of a klutz. So if I'm, if I work on an NDA project, I don't want to leave it in the background accidentally without thinking. So storing it here where the camera can't get to it is absolutely cool. And on the other side of me here, um, I've got my resin station and stuff. So everything's like kept down there and that's against the artificial wall that's here. So um, that's on purpose. Uh, so I can put the stuff there and the cold can't get to it. So right. like, like if I stuck it against a stone wall, um, it's just like, you know, just little things like that. But um, 
largely there's a lot of like other things that I need to get sorted. Like my lathe is going to go on the um, underneath the sign there. I've got another drill press that's supposed to be fitted in that my um, soon father-in-law will be sticking in for me and stuff. So uh, there's yeah, there's a few other things as well, but that's the basis of it. And then around my workstation, uh, which obviously I can't turn the camera around and show you, um, I've got all my tools arranged on the wall, like hand tools. So I've got all my brushes and all my screwdrivers, wrenches, scissors, clamps, files, uh, Allen keys, you name it. So it's all within the individual reach because I got a bit obsessed with watching like Adam Savage rearrange his uh, workshop. And so it's like first order of retrievability. So everything was to hand, no like drawers or anything like that. And I went a bit overboard like <laughs> planning my stuff like that because I, I hate rooting around for stuff. There we oh, go. Yeah, there's, a, there's a good picture, yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I've got everything arranged like that. So um, that's pretty cool. And you got a wee window as well. Get some daylight in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've I've changed that ever so slightly since that photo was taken. I've um, used some old screen blinds and put them down the window uh, so they're white. And then when the natural sunlight shines in during the day, it actually acts as a natural light and lights up the entire space because it obviously diffuses the light across the entire space. So I get a lot of light for free from not, like not, not much sunlight at all especially in ireland mm -hmm. so um yeah it's um it's just a, like a little thing um that actually worked out a lot better than i thought um but yeah it's i mean the whole place is a constantly evolving um thing i mean i'm, I'm probably gonna move a couple of things maybe um but uh, for, for, this is a good foundation for me to work on which is the whole point in the first place it's just something for me to like you know build on and move forward with so yeah Excellent. no that's fantastic um <clears throat> yeah because i've been watching you build this workshop and it's always a it's always an envy to see somebody be getting to create it's like i've got a workshop but it kind of yeah. has evolved and morphed into the kind of mess of you know, chaos that it <laughs> is right now uh, but you've obviously spent some time thinking about this and have uh, been yeah. lucky enough to sort of go and build it as you want and as you see that's pretty yeah. pretty damn cool man i'm jealous thanks man it's a nice uh, little space yeah, I mean, this place has literally been in my head for like three years, um, probably just before we moved here. Like the way it looks now is almost identical to the way I wanted it um, when it was built. Because, I mean, I could dream and go big and stuff like that, but that's a few years down the line because I also want to get my house and stuff sorted first. Yeah. Um, and then we'll we'll go big then when that, all that's sorted. But um, for the time being, this is more than enough space for me to be able to work and do my do my shears in so well, that's pretty cool that's pretty cool uh, i've got some questions for you. i know we have spoken before yeah. um, but i still want to ask them again um we have yeah. got some, we have some, got some viewers and uh what we can do is if you are watching and you want to ask some questions uh of myself or more importantly of john from jcosway props uh you can use the q a app um which i don't know where you can find it but apparently there's a q a app where you can ask questions and i can see them on my screen here and we can ask them and uh, hopefully we'll get some time uh, a little bit later on so if you have any questions feel free to use that or you can just like tweet us or something i'm sure we'll pick it up my phone sitting here um but yeah what was i, I was going to ask you a question so yeah you uh, are a professional um there are a few of us in this part of the world um yeah but was that an intention? Like, did you wake up one day and say, right, I am going to be a cosplay prop artist? Or did it kind of, how did it come about? No, it found me, um, which I think is probably the story for a good few of us, to be fair. <laughs> um, it, basically, um, if you haven't heard the story before, I um, graduated from gain art, uh, game art at uh, university, and I came out right as the recession kicked in, so no jobs. Um, and the jobs that we're hiring, obviously, we're hiring the large amount of professionals who'd just been put out of work. So uh, it was like the worst time to be looking for work. So after a year of trying to get something sorted and not doing it, um, I got so fed up and somebody to cheer me up like I, I made a costume that i could wear to like a convention and it got photographed a lot and then picked up a lot and they got posted around like kotaku and things like that and it got me a lot of attention and it got a lot of people asking like, like you know where did you get the suit and i said i made it and it's like can you make me one it's like okay like and it's basically started off as like a small run thing um then two years went past and like a couple of molds and um a few more iterations to the final version of what the helmet i got now and it just never stopped in that time it, it grew and grew and grew um and in the end it, i like i was earning more 
doing this than like you know I would have been sitting around in some fast food job trying to like basically wait for my job situation to change. So I was like, right, well, let's make a proper go of this, and um, that's what I did, and it's been like you know forward ever since. Really, it's um, it's continued to grow. Um, people continue to like support the work and continue to post it, and it keeps can to get shared, and even like to this day, it's. Um, Strikes a chord with people, like you know, especially um, with the new Fallout game coming out. It's like quite a um, a big, like you know, a big topic among Fallout like fans and stuff like that. So it's um, yeah, it's just continues to grow and grow and grow. And um, yeah, five years later, here we are with all this. And uh, yeah, it's all down to every single person who's ever bought anything from me or liked a photo or shared it. It's like you know. It's why we do what we do. It's, it's why we're here. So it's it's pretty amazing. That is pretty impressive, dude. Congratulations on the five years. Um, I Thanks, think I, I think I'm four years this year. On April, I think it's four. I lose track. I forgot what age I was recently. Um, <laughs> <laughs> even my mum forgot what age I was. She got it wrong oh, last time I was home. Um, but no, like um, I want to know because like a lot of people talk to me and they probably talk to you as well, and they they sort of see this. Um, people on the internet who are doing what we do and us included and they yeah. think oh i want to do that i could give it a go i can i can make stuff um and it's a lot more difficult um, oh, yeah. than just you know making a costume in front of that but what sort of obstacles did you encounter um because i know you had some because i know i've had some i know everybody yeah. else in this game has had some um, but uh, what sort of obstacles how did you overcome them you know the the learning curve of the business stuff, which is probably the biggest thing, again, that a lot of us say it's like learning all that. Yeah. Um, but that side, like being the obvious and stuff, it's the, the marketing of the work and getting it seen in the right places is like crucial to getting yourself like growing your brand and growing like your audience and you know just getting the word out so people will find you and buy stuff from you because like, it's, it's a cyclical experience like you, they put post something cool so they you know come to you but you need to make something cool for them to come to you so yeah um it's yeah so it's doing it in the right way um like anyone can point a camera at something and take a photo, but it's taking the photo in the right way again. And like, you know, the lighting is important and like, you know, the style and making sure it's not blurry and then learning to post things in the right places at the right times, um, learning when your audience is most likely going to be online and when they're most receptive to your work. Um, I mean, that's just one side of it. That's just the social media side of it. <laughs> it's um, it, but I mean, uh, thankfully I, before I did my game art degree, I did an advertising degree. Um, so oh. that's, helped, that's helped me a lot um, doing all all that side of the stuff. So like the all the marketing stuff and everything that I do, all the graphic stuff that I do is, is, is all done by me. Um, the website is being done by my girlfriend because she's a coder, which has taken a lot longer than uh, we originally anticipated. Yeah, tell me about um, it. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, it's, I mean, that's just one aspect, but presenting finding the best way to present your work in the first place is like a big step of getting you know getting your stuff out there and getting the customers or getting people just to enjoy your work you know, like in general because um you i wouldn't say you've got to make them care about it because like you know you can't force feelings on people but you've got to present something in a way that makes somebody say oh wow and you know and great you grabs something that grabs their attention in the right ways um and that's that's like really really important. Obviously, apart from like I said, obviously the obvious business stuff. But um, yeah, man, it's uh, it's a complicated complicated business, um, especially like learning the like tools and new materials and the trial and error that can entail. So uh, I think that's the easy part. Like yeah, product, I mean, products are products. You know, there's a right way and there's a wrong way, and you learn oh, yeah, that yeah, pretty yeah. quickly. But the the business side of things, that's just it's never ending. It's always constantly changing. Yeah. Uh, that was my next question. Have you noticed like a sort of from when you, when you first start, cause I know for me personally, um, when I first started, I had this idea of where the business was going to go. And if uh, anybody was a sort of fan from day one, uh, Sorenzo was this anonymous entity. Like there was no Tom wall attached to Sorenzo props and there was no 
face. There was no talking to cameras. There was nothing like that. And it only took me a few months to realize that people don't care how good your stuff is. You know, you could be the, the most crazy, insane artist on the planet, but unless you give them something more, unless you give them a reason to go look at it, they're not going to pay any attention to what you do. So you kind of have to put a little bit more thought into it. Yeah. Um, but I know that the scene has, the business is constantly changing and I'm constantly adapting my business plan and you know, my approach. But uh, have you noticed any big changes that have affected you and had to make any sort of, you know, adjustments to what you're doing and how you do it? Um, actually, yeah, going back to like the, um, the social media stuff, actually, um, when we started out, social media was still really in its infancy, like not disregarding Facebook, but things like Instagram and like Twitter and stuff yeah. like that. The last couple of years, Instagram has been a huge instrument in getting like the work out there. It's like a whole different audience. Yeah. Um, and it's a really, really good way of sharing something pretty cool pretty quickly. And it does like you see instant results. Like if you tag stuff the right way and obviously you know if it's a cool photo and stuff like that you'll immediately start seeing the like the likes and stuff like tick 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 um so yeah the, the social media aspect's been a really big like um change personally for me in the last couple of years because it's really really like it helped increase my business um like the uh, initially i did the bulk of my stuff through either facebook or through my um email like you know a commission um email address um but at the moment, it's like it's like Twitter. Um, it's still something I'm wrestling with, um, but Instagram for me has been hugely, hugely important in the last year and a half now. Uh, I mean, I've really ramped up. I try and make sure that I post at least something every day, and maybe at the weekends, but I try and keep those to myself. So, but it, sometimes something cool comes up, so you post it. But um, yeah social like yeah th those two social media platforms have been really really um big the last couple of years i think for like prop makers and stuff like that as well no definitely uh social media is one of our most useful tools um and i think without it we wouldn't be making anything um but um so yeah you're um you're obviously in this for the long game. <laughs> you, mm. You've done five years, so I'm assuming that you're sort of looking towards the next five years. Yeah. Um. What do you have? What's your plan? Do you have a plan? Do I you do. Because like, I know people always speak about this one, three, and five year plan, and I don't. I don't know if I even have one to be perfectly honest. I think I kind of do somewhere jotted down in the in the back of my mind. Um. But what's yours? I've got a five-year plan, and I could probably push it to a 10, but I'll stick with five at the moment because it's more in my head. Um, in five years, um, we're going to we'll be moving again, but to our final house. Um, and I want a, uh, like a purpose, again, purpose-built workshop, but a very large um, space, probably something similar to the size that Harrison's got. Um, but in, obviously, in the meantime, I'm going to be doing like a lot of... Um, Saving. Uh, <laughs> but, um, uh, apart or, from, or building up your credit rating. <laughs> yeah, that too. Um, but apart from that, it's um, I want to I, I want to use like the um, the like things like YouTube and stuff. I want to help like educate more people on not not prop making in general which does help but just making stuff um you know when just anybody who's thought oh, i could put that together but i don't really know how and just giving them the impetus to like say you can do it like you know it's anybody can pick up a brush and like you know paint a painting so you can pick up a piece of tube and make a lightsaber so um it's it's just presenting it in a way that you know people can find relatable and think yeah i could give that a shot so um, I, I want to develop a, um, a platform where I can help people learn how to do this sort of stuff, um, you know, just crafts and stuff. Um, and what form that will take, I'm not entirely sure right now. It could be like a Patreon thing. It could be like a private subscription like platform or it could be a public thing. Um, it's, it's something that logistically I'll work out when I'm getting close to that point. But um, teaching people certainly um, something I want to do. Um, and I want to, especially here, at, like in Ireland, it's slim pickings for people like us. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so I want to help, like, spread the, oh, what's the word? 
make people more aware of what you know what can be done um, in this country um, and make people understand like you know it's it's a thing that does exist it's not just an American thing it's not just like an Australian thing it's there are good artists over here and you can be like one of them um, and it's just helping people I like, understand that or you know helping people learn that so it's it, like teaching is a big thing for me because um, like a lot of this I was self like taught um, apart from like obvious stuff like at university and stuff but um, yeah it, like teaching people is like a really cool thing for me and just helping other people like learn like what is essentially a really cool job and like learning new techniques every day um, and just helping them move forward awesome. with that. Awesome. What is the scene like in Ireland? Because um, as you know, I am Irish. Um, you are. And I don't spend a lot of time there and I have no idea of what um, prop and cosplay is like. I know I went home for my brother's 18th birthday um last month which was pretty cool and his friends i never met his friends and one of them walked into the house and he's like what up sorenzo give me this big <laughs> high five so i was like okay one person knows me that's kind of cool but uh yeah what is it like over there um i know like with the internet and education and all that sort of stuff you know you can reach the entire world yeah um, but do you have any aspirations to kind of do it on a local level because i'm recently becoming more involved with actually teaching people face to face hands-on uh which is you know rewarding as hell actually being able to see them and talk to them and yeah. connect with them that way but uh what is it like over there for you it's pretty quiet to be honest <laughs> um i mean there's like down in cork where i am um there's like one cosplay convention in this city uh every year and it's just gone <coughs> sorry and um it's it's more of like an anime like sort of thing all the major stuff happens up in um dublin yeah. Like, and that's like a convention scene like the prop scene here is pretty um slim i know there's one or two around um but none of them reached out to me so uh if you if you want to reach out to me we'll hang out we'll have a coffee or something yeah but, um but yeah it's it's been pretty quiet but i mean that's one of the reasons why i i want to like you know help make people more aware of it because like you know we could be sat next to each other and we just wouldn't know so um like you know creating that local community or creating like you know where the irish community of like you know a network that's a that's a better word for it of like you know makers and things like that is um something i really want to push forward um there's a couple uh, there's a couple of places in the city that um have like spaces like for like studio spaces for presentation stuff or like classes and uh when, once i've got things a bit more rock and roll in here i want to um see about like doing maybe doing day classes like you know teaching day classes or like evening classes or you know something of that nature or even do, like just a presentation or something of that nature just to help um move things along but it's definitely something I want to um, push forward with because um, I know you're doing like the um, the Coscon thing, which is a really really cool way of bringing makers and stuff together. Um, and I'm not going to rip that idea off, so don't worry. But <laughs> no, dude, um, go for it. Go for it. Um, um, yeah, it's yeah. I want I want to do something so you know we can all like come together and make some cool shit. So um, and like you know show the world about it. You know, tell tell everyone about it. So that's awesome. We're gonna have to get you over for a Coscon event. Yeah, definitely. Um, but something that we just launched um, today, actually. Uh, let me see if I can pop this up. So uh, as you know, I am a studio mentor with the Mac Lab, which is like a sort of fab lab, a maker facility here yeah. in. Um, in Glasgow, but we're doing CosLab. So it's a cosplay laboratory that's going to be held in the Mac Lab on a monthly basis. And yours truly will be offering some uh, advice and assistance there. But we're giving like uh, cosplayers, local cosplayers, access to like tools and equipment and machinery that they wouldn't usually get access to. So like everything from laser cutting and 3D printing, we've got like a digital uh, and industrial sewing machines. We've got electronics benches, you know, even vinyl press and stuff like that. So that's something that we're trying to do. Um, so we're having a big free event uh, at the end of March uh, 26th, I believe. I didn't even read the thing there. Uh, but yeah, you can check out the Coscom page. But yeah, it's all about getting people together and making stuff because there are so many people. As soon as you start putting on 
events, they start mm. crawling out of the woodwork, you know? Yeah. Um, they are there. They just don't know where to go. It's, it's like the, um, what's the Wayne's World saying? If you, um, if you make it, they will come. So uh, it's, <laughs> it's uh, feel the dreams. That's from that's ripped oh. off from. <laughs> we, we ripped it off, man. <laughs> uh, for um, our first post for Coscon this year, I just took that scene from uh, from Feel the Dreams. Uh, Bill, that they will come. Uh, it was quite funny. That's awesome. uh, yeah, we're showing our age now, dude. That movie must yeah, be like 40, forty years <laughs> old or something like that. That's awesome. Um, so. Um, I want to know a little bit more about you. Um, that what sort of inspires you and what kind of gets you going, and uh, who you look up to. So, do you have any sort of major influences uh, or inspirations that have kind of helped you now, or have helped you um, when you first start going? Um, there's no other way around it. It's Harrison. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that guy! Oh, that guy creeps up everywhere. Um, I remember seeing his work like really, really early on. I think it was probably the very first laser rifle he ever put out, like the the old MDF thing that he built, mm -hmm. um, and that like really caught my eye. Um, I think that's what inspired me to build the laser, my first laser rifle in the first place. Not the one that I've cast, the like a big cardboard oversized one that I built ages ago. Um, but he's been crazily like influential. Um, I think to everybody really. Yeah. Um, he's the he's the touchstone. So um, him and Bill Duran uh, from Punish Props, um, who you, you were lucky enough to be on his show uh, recently. Indeed. Yeah, that was uh, a hell of a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. uh, one day I can dream. <laughs> I'd love to even just talk to Bill. I've, I've never said a word to Bill. So um, uh, I mean, I've, I've, I've posted questions on his show and stuff. But I've never had like a one on one, like even internet chat with a guy. So uh, he is a very, very friendly person. And uh, you'd never know you might be watching this. I know that uh, Brittany, his wife, who is now a um, partner at the uh, Punish Props. Oh, has, Lady Longshanks. Has, Lady Longshanks has yeah. like, like the post. So I'm not sure if they're watching today, but I am. Very confident at some point in the future you will be speaking with Bill Durant at length. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, that'd be really, really cool. Yeah. Um, Eric from Core Geek as well. Um, his stuff they put out, and I know he makes it basically for himself um, and his family and stuff. But God, that guy works like a machine. He does, doesn't he? Um, his, and he does it, does it all in his spare time as yeah, well. Yeah, it's it crazy. Seems. Um, yeah, his his work's like really really cool. Um, Alan Amos as well. Um, like yeah. His, his um, Dragon Age um, mask. The yeah, um, so God, good. that thing's so cool. Um, I really really wanted to build one, and I saw how well his came out, and I was like, well, I can't top that. So there's no point. So <laughs> I'll end up just probably buying a kit at some point off him. <laughs> um, and oh, Igor, um, who you had on your last show as well um from pinsky props yeah um i love that guy's attention to detail um it's it i i, I do quite high detailed stuff um and i oh god that guy's so good jesus um like his shredder mask i could look that, that i could look it. at high definition photos of that at every angle all day i i i I, I have a big thing for like working surfaces and like texture and things like that. So like and stuff like that, I could just literally just stare at the same picture all day and <laughs> just like oh. So tell, tell me this: Are you the sort of person that when you're out and about that you just find yourself like touch, touching things, like you yeah. know, rubbing rubbing your hands off, like you know, the wall or like uh, I could quite well sometimes put my face to stuff. <laughs> I was in the science yeah. museum and I was putting my face against things. Um, but yeah. Just feeling what things are actually made yeah. of and how they being, like touching. Like I, I, I very rarely like, walk past a building with like touching the stone or something. <laughs> yeah. or even if it's like a prickly holly bush or something, I run my hand through it. And it's like you probably shouldn't have done that, but good. It, it, it's not just me. Thank you. Yeah. So I mean, when I was doing um, video game art at university, um, we had the added benefit of if you see something cool, take a photo of it because it could be a texture for a video game model at some point. So yeah. not only was I touching everything, I was then photographing the thing I was touching. So I built up a huge library of textures. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I had a problem at one point. I used to do that for architecture because we create like architecture montages. So you'd be taking pictures of like blank walls and paint surfaces and whatever to build up your library. Yeah. Uh, so good. I'm not the only weirdo that goes around. Touching oh, no, things. no, no. 
awesome, 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 awesome. I'm glad I'm not the only one, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> we should start a support group. <laughs> oh God, just there is just around touching the couches or something. Oh, this one time I touched this thing, <laughs> it, could, it, could, it could very easily transcend into um, some uh, dodgy situations or uh, dodgy conversations. Um, Awesome. So um, I know that you've been working on your biggest project so far this year, and for most of last year, was working on your workshop. But is there anything that you are um, currently working on commission wise? Is there anything that you can tell us about? Um, at the moment, I'm doing um, some uh, new set of uh, NCR uh, helmets that were obviously th uh, delayed because of. You know the the hassle with uh, getting this place up and running and making sure that I was getting power in the bloody place, and it was like airtight and uh, watertight because before the roof was sealed, it, it, the water was like beading on the roof, which you know one drop of that in the resin, you're done. So um, mm -hmm. it's it was impossible to like work. So I'm getting back up to speed with um, orders, and thankfully, like you know, I had some really really understanding customers, so um, they've been like really bearing with me. Um, so I could get like you know stuff done, but apart from that, um, I'm basically just working through my backlog because um, I got some commission orders that'll take me up until about June, um, and I'm probably gonna get a new batch then for the um, Star Wars helmet that I'll start at that point. Um, but beyond that, um, I was the last time we spoke, I was working on a um, tri beam laser rifle. Um, which is obviously the modified version of the AER9483 or 4849 laser rifle, um, which had to be put on hold because of the move, and then I haven't touched it since because obviously getting this place sorted. So um, that's something I really, really want to finish very, very quickly um, because my wall is crying out for a gun. <laughs> so because um, I'm still haven't built myself a uh, very, like an AER9 laser rifle, yeah, I've I've made them and sold them, and <laughs> they're off on other off to other people but i've yet to cast myself one yeah um this year i'm building myself a daft punk helmet i don't care do, do <laughs> it's, it, been yeah. like, it's been like four years and i still not got one yeah <laughs> so. so i want to do that um there's the new pit boy that i want to make um but that will come as a spare time project as opposed from thing because i want to like i said branch out for more stuff but my big thing for this year is one that i'm going to do for myself but i'll I'm, i'll probably sell the um the molds of the helmet because i'd be stupid not to but i'm going to build the um t60 power armor from flight four which is the big new uh seven and a half foot tall behemoth power armor that the the main guy wears in the trailer and stuff and um yeah i'm going to build that from scratch obviously i'm going to use my good old pal eva foam for like the body armor and stuff like that but the helmet i'm gonna make like you know traditional cast rotor casting and stuff like that so um and i want to get that finished um probably by the end of july um because i'm coming over for a convention in the uk called amicon and i want to debut it there so i've got to get my skates on really so um yeah, get, I'm going to get the last last thing in my orders sorted, new batch of orders sorted, and then I can work side by side with the other stuff. Like, so I can you know work on orders during the day and then work on my own stuff in the night. So it's going to be a lot of sleepless nights, but that's what I got planned. And then whatever else like crops up, uh, there's one, uh, what was it the new Dishonored? Um, Dishonored 2, um, the new mask, which is like a hexagonal, um, flat, multifaceted plated uh, face that. mask. Um, the other one was like a very smooth, like you know, skull-looking thing, and it's the same sort of shape, but it's all like, um, yeah. Uh, oh, I should know this. I did the game art, like oh yes, triangles. Mm -hmm. It's it's a lot of hexagonal, like not hexagonal. Yeah, tri a lot of triangular, angular plating. Like, sort of thing, so. I've got a screen grab of it right now. Um, is this the one? Let's have a look. Where are we? Am I showing it? No, I've not. Oh wait, yeah, there we are. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I, I like. I really loved the original version, but this new one this it has such like a story. It's the texture. I think that's what's getting me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I calm really, down, John. Calm down. Yeah, so, um, I yeah, that's that's something I really really want to build this year as well. Especially if like um, well, hopefully if the game's coming out this year. So 
Alan. Yeah, so plenty. I've got plenty to be getting on with. Um, I want to concentrate on some smaller projects as well, um, stuff that I can just pick up and do in between other things. Like there's a couple of kits that I want to buy for some people as well, um, and I'll probably do like some videos and stuff like that. Um, I'm planning like additional stuff, like around video content and stuff, as, as well as doing like orders and stuff. So it's gonna be a, a busy, busy year. So, but that's it. We yeah. gotta keep busy, haven't we? Yeah, I mean, after two after two years of trying to work at full speed and basically having like chains around my legs that were saying no no slow down um because of the space and yeah. where i was um I, i'm not even gonna get into my neighbor from the last place that was a nightmare but um yeah it's it's nice to be basically somewhere that i'm confident i can work and just go at it like full speed so uh yeah it's gonna be a good year good year awesome i love it positive outlook yeah man uh, you may have already answered this, but um, what would your dream build be? Um... Uh, yeah. Um, the last time we were on, I said it was the uh, Back to the Future DeLorean. DeLorean, yes, you did. Yeah. Um, it's still that. But, uh, <laughs> I'll, but I'll add the, um, the Ghostbusters proton pack to that, like the original Ghostbusters. No, I can't believe I have to say that now. Um, it's obviously I, you know, we all grew up playing that, um, like in the schoolyard and stuff like that. And I never had the toy one as a kid. I, of all the Ghostbusters toys we got, I never got like the toy proton pack. Um, so I really, really want to sort out that part of my childhood and just like say, right, it's done now. You have it. You can move on to the DeLorean. <laughs> so <laughs> um, yeah, that's probably my um, my. Apart from the DeLorean, it's a, as a more attainable thing uh, that I can make myself. It's, yeah. It'd be the Ghostbusters Proton Pack because it'd be a good learning process as well because of obviously all the lighting and the sound stuff that goes into yeah. it. So um, the whole process of making it will be as cool as the actual finished product. So um, I'm really, that'd be hopefully something I can start in the new year. Um, so yeah, fingers crossed. I don't want to get sucked into it too quickly, but what do you what do you think of the the new design for the Proton Pack for the new movie? When I, f Ooh. I'm not gonna hate on the film because I can't. Like, it's not out. You've not um, watched it yet, so. No, and yeah. it's like no, I can't judge by a trailer because. I've not even seen the trailer. Yeah, well, it's, it's trailers can be very very good, but trailers can always always make the best film in the world look like absolute horseshit. Yeah. So um, I can't judge by the trailer. Um, so, but. Going back to the equipment, the new Proton Pack I didn't like to begin with, but it has kind of grown grown on me. Um, like the form of it, it's, it's still a bit too boxy for my liking. But I like the big um, chamber on the back uh, that in the trailer you can see it actually glows red. Um, it, like it's circle, it goes around the circle like like the original Proton Packs did. Um, I, I think I recently saw photos of what the new ghost trap looks like, and it's like a drum with a handle um, that yeah. like opens up. And I'm still not sure about that one. Um, well, I didn't really care too much about it. I was like, okay, they're going to do a new movie. They're going to do new stuff. Yeah. But I recently watched a video, and I can't remember where I even saw it. I think I might just saw it on like my Facebook feed. But it was a mini documentary into the design of the new Proton Pack. And they actually got nuclear physicists involved in it because the original design was actually based around if we were to try and create this type of device, what would it look like and how would it have to work? So they yeah. actually got like the sort of leading nuclear physicists to come in and sort of start putting together, you know, if we could contain all this technology in a backpack, what would it look like? So the design and the shape and how it all sort of lights up and glows is actually based on kind of sort of theoretical science oh, wow. and apparently all of the like notes and like whiteboards and chalkboards and sort of you know algorithms and stuff that they have throughout the movie sets they are have all like been checked by scientists to make sure that they're actually not just gibberish that they actually yes. lead to something so i kind of have got a little bit more faith in it now that it's not just sort yeah. of, you know, put four funny chicks in a ghostbuster car yeah, and expect I mean, to make a movie you know so they seem to have put a bit of effort into it and i thought that was kind of cool 
You know? Yeah, when you break some stuff down to that finer detail, that there's obviously somebody who's cares paying attention and cares. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, you'll have to give me a link to that video because I love the I great story of stuff. So that's that's saying. I will cool. try and find it again, and I will put it in the show notes uh, if I do yeah, find stuff, it. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure it shouldn't be too difficult. I hope it shouldn't be too difficult to find. Um, so I can't believe like we've just nearly done an hour. So I oh wow, Jesus. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. It just kind of like escaped there. Um, so I've got some questions. I want to ask some questions. I like doing some rapid fire ones at the end. Um, and these, uh, I just want to kind of catch you off guard and see what you say. So um, five years. What has been your best moment so far? Oh wow, five years best moment so far. Um... It's probably the helmet I just sent out. Um, I recently made a uh, limited edition uh, NCR Ranger helmet that had all the um, the Vault Boy um, symbols from Fort New Vegas. They're all specifically from New Vegas, like printed all over it, and um, it, it blends into like the actual helmet. And that went to uh, somebody who worked on the original game at uh, Obsidian Entertainment. Um, who now works at Bethesda uh, Game Studios. So I actually got to send a parcel to the studio um, along with my old NCR flag. And um, yeah, that was that was pretty amazing, to be honest. It's something that I've always like, you know, you dream of making this stuff and hopefully like, you know, it gets in like, you know, a lot of, people's hands but to go into the hands of somebody who actually worked on the game who said yeah that's amazing like i want one off you is pretty cool and the fact that it's now in not in obsidian's headquarters but in bethesda's headquarters is even more amazing so that pretty um, cool. that's pretty cool so yeah that's my biggest thing i think i was just so, trying to find a picture of that you don't have one on your page do you um not at the moment it's a, it's on my twitter though if you can find um uh, i think your man posted a link to it on my twitter okay i think of it's a uh, iridium game dev or well, we'll need to move on because we're running out of yeah, time but that's um cool, that's cool, that's cool. We'll, we'll uh i'll see if i can get a, a link to yeah, that so, okay. no i did see that one you had all the decals all the, the vinyls on yeah. it which was pretty sweet um, and I forgot what my next question is. Um, okay, so yes, um, if you had the opportunity to hang out with people, uh, or you had the opportunity to meet three people, and one of them was just to hang out with, and one of them was to collaborate collaborate with artistically, and one was just to completely fangirl over, who would those three people be? Uh, alive or dead, uh, famous or not famous, uh, anybody, three people, hang out, collaborate, and Fan girl over. Oh my god. Um, right. Fan girl over, it'll probably be Harrison because <laughs> why not? Um, to collaborate with, I would like to do something maybe one day with Igor uh, Pinsky because cool. again, his stuff's freaking amazing. I, I could say like Bill Duran, but Igor, his stuff just it. it it's, it's super high detail stuff, so I really, really like that. Um, and to hang out with, I'm going to throw a curve, curveball and just say Jack Nicholson, because the guy is pretty much insane. <laughs> you know, I can imagine sitting down having a chat with him would be amazing. Sitting down having a drink with him would probably get crazy. So um, like, I can imagine just sitting there and be like, right, okay, we're going to go to a pub. Okay, okay. Um, right, we've got to catch a plane. It's like, what? And that would just be the beginning. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> you've got this all worked out. You don't need this yeah. to happen. <laughs> so um, yeah, I can imagine that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Jack Nicholson, like now, because he's like quite old, isn't he? Oh, like, um, Jack Nicholson, like in his prime. Eighty-nine, Jack Nicholson. Eighty-nine, 89 Jack Nicholson. Just after, just after the Joker happened, so just after that big buzz, and he's got his green. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, who have you discovered, if anybody, recently uh, that's new to you, not necessarily new, but is like kind of like really good at what they do um, within the cosplay world, the prop world? Um, see, I've tried, I've been following a lot of people for a long time, so finding new people is quite difficult. The main 
one I suppose is Fancy Lads, who's another British uh, Fancy Lad props. He's another yes. British prop maker. Um, like hit the stuff that he's been doing um, with his, I think it's Destiny gun, the one, yeah. the beautiful feather um, up it. I don't play Destiny, so I don't know the gun. Sorry, dude. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I his works are like, really, really like pretty. Um, and yeah, yeah, and Martin from Landstalker as well, like his. You know, the 1886, the older 1886 grenade that he built, like from like scratch bars, oh, all yes. metal and yes, stuff yes, like yes. that. That was a work of art. I mean, that's beautiful. And I really hope, like, it, it finally is it, he was either getting it sent there or he's getting it shipped back or it was stuck I've, in mail limbo. I've not spoken to him in a while, but it was in mail limbo, like, yeah, last so. year. Yeah, it got held up. Um, I don't even know where it got held up. I've forgotten that story it was so long ago, but I hope it's got to where it was. Yeah, worth fingers it. crossed. Because I remember he couldn't get paid until it was, I think, sorted or something. So, yeah. Jesus. It was a bit of a headache, all right. But no, severely talented guy. Um, yeah, man. And I've had him, I've uh, chatted to him on a similar type show like this. Uh, I must get him back on at some point. I've not heard from him in a while. Um, have you heard any rumors about yourself? True or untrue? Um, no, not really. Um, you keep a like, low, low profile? I Well, I follow a lot you know I, I, I pay a lot of attention to the stuff that comes through but like I have, like rumor wise not really i mean i've had people like when they have helmets and like or if they post a photo with like credit or something like that i've like found people who've said oh you know jay cosplay props made that and like you know they they go out of their way to say oh that's yours and the yeah. fact that people like recognize your work with like credit or anything like that is pretty amazing um if you post work with like credit of anybody, fuck you. So, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it's yeah that no no rumors really. No, um, like to be fair, the Fallout community is really really uh, you know because they're the ones I'm most you know associated with, and I like, talk to a, a lot of them as well. So, um, but yeah, I've never heard any like rumors about me, um, but like supportive stuff and like saying oh you know. This didn't have credit. We helped you out. We made sure that people knew who it was, and they made sure they changed it to the credit. But yeah, other than that, it's um, been okay so far. I hope I hope not hear anything malicious about me. So <laughs> I've not heard anything about you either. Uh, Thank God. Yeah. So I think that's uh, no news is good news. Uh, to my dad. Yeah. Would say. Yeah. Um, but uh, quickly, tell me about the T-shirt that you're wearing. Oh, this. Um, it's the Men vs. Cosplay uh, Kickstarter t-shirt um, because uh, today is the day I'm in the calendar. So um, they did a 365 day a year Kickstarter calendar last year and um, yeah, 365 cosplayers submitted and got their work in and there's a different cosplayer every single day. There I am. Yeah. And um, yeah, on March 10th today, I'm the uh, the guy who's on there. So um, yeah, I was really really proud to be a part of that. Um, it's I've actually managed to get two uh, costumes in there. There's Ooh. that one, and there's another one. I think it's in August or is it October? I think it's August, and that's for my Big B Wolf cosplay, which I haven't. I've hinted at on my um, my Instagram thing uh, by like. Uh, some of the screenshots of the stuff I was editing, but it was not going to go up on my page for a couple of months yet because I want to schedule that because I'm, I, I, you know, I'm staggering content. So, yep. um, and I'm hoping that they might announce the new game in the next two months as well. So I'm hoping <laughs> to release it around then. It's it's all about timing. So yep. um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting that out there because that was a that was a costume that I made and I didn't like and up until the moment I finished putting the makeup on I was like holy shit it came together yeah. so um, yeah that was a real surprise so yeah keep an eye out for that awesome um, oh no I was going to ask something there and I completely forgot what it was uh, no it's gone that's, Damn. that's me being terrible if something related to that and you threw me with your um your cosplay. Uh, <laughs> oh well. Uh, the calendar or? Oh no, it was. Uh, you were you talking about the release date for the new one? Maybe. No, no. It's just when you start going on about your second page in the calendar. I lost. Oh, right, my, okay. I, lo I lost my question. I forgot what I was going to ask you. Terrible cool, cool. interviewer. Um, it's all good. No, it's definitely gone. It's definitely gone. Um, so I'll have to have you back, and if you think a bit again, I'll have to, <laughs> definitely have to have you back um, <laughs> to ask you that question that I couldn't yeah. remember. Um, 
no i think i, I think i pretty much covered it but um to, to close off um obviously oh wait oh somebody has got a question tiger lily cosplay has uh, just tuned in and she says the telltale better announce season two pretty soon they better had yes yeah i've not played that one yet i just got through um walking dead um which i loved uh, yeah. I've, been, I've been recommended to get that one i've also been harassed to do a cosplay from that but i thought i can't really do that until i've actually played it because um, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. one of the one of the better beardy ones isn't it yeah um, it's pretty damn good it is pretty good but um thanks for that um tiger lily cosplay thank you and uh i know two tiger lily cosplays now so i'm wondering which one it is um i didn't get a lot of chance to look at the picture but to close off um to finish the show you have uh, been doing this for quite a while as i have i um, and there are lots of people who are interested in doing what we do in whether that's making props and cosplay for themselves or you know making them uh, making a small business of it or maybe even making a living off it hmm. um, what advice would you offer to somebody who is starting out um, at any level um, are there some uh, nuggets of wisdom that you have collected over the years that you would like to share or do you want to keep them all secret <laughs> no, <laughs> um, stay top of the game I would say start small um, you can dream big obviously but start small ease yourself into it because it's when you lump everything like the business stuff and everything on top of it it can get quite overwhelming so start off slow like ease yourself in like don't jump in the deep end sort of thing really um, it's it's a cool business and it's really really fun and it's so so rewarding it's the most rewarding thing I've ever done I mean every single day learn you learn something new because you know, you're always constantly problem solving is what i love about it so but um start off small and ease yourself into it and don't if you're looking up to other like like cosplayers and stuff like that don't get bogged down with oh god they're building something so complicated i want to do something like that or oh my god like they got a big like giant workshop i can't do that because i've only got like you know uh, you know a small shed i've worked in a small shed i started off on the end of my bed um like planing things out of um i was doing the peppercura thing and i was cutting it on the, literally on the end of my bed on a small table and that's where i started then i moved to the doorway of my grandparents garage because i needed somewhere to sand and then they said right you can have a little space in the corner of there then i ended up taking over the entire garage um it's been like four years since i worked there and they're still finding dust so um it's <laughs> don't think you need a giant workshop don't think you don't need all the tools because you don't like i worked like i said i started on the corner of my bed i worked in small sheds medium sheds and now i've got this but everything that was in here fitted in the smallest space i've ever worked in so it you know it can be done so don't get bogged down thinking it's too much because it isn't you can do it just start slow and ease yourself into it and build from there awesome I was just going to uh, shamelessly plug uh, my book, but uh, <laughs> somebody has just come in with a question, and it is not hey, Bill. than Bill Duran uh, from Punish Props, who says, what prop maker show do you like better, Prop Live or Sorenzo Meets? <laughs> Talk about putting me in a rock and a hard place. <laughs> <laughs> that is the best question we have ever had. <laughs> can and, I plead the fifth? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> please, please the fifth. I'm not sure if you can do that from Ireland, but I'll let you away since we're an international community. <laughs> we'll go with international law on that one. I love you so, both. Hey to Bill and thanks for tuning in. Um, so yeah, I'm still going to plug my book. because yeah. My show. Oh, no, that's the wrong one. Press this button. It's my show so I can do what I want. Uh, if you are starting out, you should definitely check out this book. Yes. It's a simple little book that I wrote last year, which is all about making and how to keep it nice and simple for yourself. And it deals with all the common uh, problems and issues and concerns that makers have um, at any level. So, yeah, pick that up. It's only a few bucks. I'll drop a link for that in the show notes. But, um, John, uh, that has been a well over an hour, and it has been so much fun. Um, second time around, and I think we'll definitely have to get you on again. Um, but for everybody out there, um, where can they find you? What is your uh, your chosen uh, social media platform of, of choice? <laughs> right. Um, first off, Bill, if you want me to find out which one is better, maybe you should have it on your show. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, 
you can find me. Um, I'm forward slash J Cosplay on Twitter, Instagram, uh, YouTube, uh, J Cosplay UK on Facebook because some bastard stole the URL um, before I could get to it. <laughs> but um, I'm everything. If it's social media, I'm at J Cosplay. If it's Facebook, it's um, J Cosplay UK. And the currently under reconstruction, J Cosplay.com, you can find me there. It should be finished in the next couple of months now. Now we've got everything else sorted. So, um, yeah, you can find me there. Please uh, give me a like and follow, and um, I'll see you down the line somewhere. Sean, I think me and you should start a support group to motivate each other to get our websites done because I have never struggled so much with a project in my entire life oh, for finding God. the time to get that thing done. So I think me and you need to, like, you know, like cry in each other's shoulders or something. Yeah, and just yeah get, that's get, get through it. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, thank you so much again for joining us and yeah. thank everybody who tuned in uh, to watch the show and to everybody who's watching this on YouTube. Um, my name is Tom Wall and uh, this has been Sorenzo Meets with Jay Cosby Props. So until the next one, we'll see you later. Bye, everyone.